All right, good afternoon. Um, we're going to have a, well, not a guest, but there'll be a separate briefing after we're done. Uh, Francesco Rocca, the president of the International Federation of Red Crescent and Red, uh, sorry, of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, otherwise known as the IFRC, will be here to brief you on the upcoming International Migration Review uh, Forum. Though that will be, I assume, after Paulina. I think she is briefing. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, you may have seen that last night we issued a statement in which this, uh, the Secretary General said he was appalled by the killing of 10 people in a vile act of racist violence extremism that took place in Buffalo, New York on May 14th. He extends his deepest condolences to the families and loved ones of the victims and hopes that justice will be served swiftly. The Secretary General condemns in the strongest terms racism in all its forms and discrimination based on race, religion, belief, or national origin. We must all work together towards building a more peaceful and inclusive society, we said in the statement. Turning to Yemen, we welcome the first commercial international flight from Sana'a Airport that took place today, and that was the first flight in six years. The flight took off from Sana'a to Amman, Jordan. This is an important uh, element in the truce recently achieved through the mediation efforts of the UN Special Envoy, Hans Grunberg. We thank the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan for their invaluable support in bringing about this important achievement, and the government of Yemen for their in constructive role in making this possible. We urge all parties involved to continue facilitating flights as per the terms of the truce agreement. Uh, Mr. Grunberg is working with the parties to ensure the successful implementation of all terms of the truce, including making progress towards opening roads in Taiz and other governorates to facilitate freedom of movement for Yemenis within their own country. He's also engaging the parties to strengthen and extend the truce and build on its momentum towards reaching a comprehensive and sustainable political solution to the conflict. And more importantly, most importantly, he will be briefing you tomorrow uh, via video conference after he speaks to the Security Council. Uh, so we'll have him piped into this room. Uh, turning to the Horn of Africa, the Emergency Relief Coordinator, Martin Griffiths, has wrapped up his visit to Kenya, where he saw the devastating impact of the fourth consecutive failed rainy season in the Horn of Africa. During his visit, Mr. Griffiths met with people in the village of Turkana County in Kenya, who told him how this is the worst drought they have endured. He also spoke to virtually, excuse me, he also spoke virtually with displaced people in Dulao in Somalia and in the Somali region of Ethiopia, who said that this crisis is threatening their way of life. Mr. Griffiths also met with Kenyan officials and discussed the government's response to the drought, as well as the need for urgent action and support for drought-affected communities to adapt and thrive in the future. The drought in the Horn of Africa has also affected more than 18 million people across Ethiopia, Somalia, and Kenya, including at least 16.7 million people who are severely food insecure. These numbers are expected to rise in the weeks ahead, with the Horn of Africa facing the longest drought in four decades. Mr. Griffiths stressed that we are now out of time if the new funding to further scale up aid operations is not received immediately we face the prospect of significant loss of life in the period ahead. And uh, I've been asked about Nigeria, and I can tell you that the Secretary General is closely following the developments in Nigeria's Sokoto state, where tensions are high following the murder of a female Christian student on May 12th for alleged blasphemous statements. The Secretary General expresses his condolences to the bereaved family of the young woman. The Secretary General strongly condemns this act of violence and welcomes that, uh, the fact that many religious leaders in the area have also condemned this attack. And from Abye, the UN peacekeeping mission there says they, are strong, they strongly condemn the surge in criminal incidents over the past two weeks. The mission is engaged with the government of Sudan and South Sudan and has also reached out to the paramount chiefs of the Ngok Dinka and the Miseria communities. Despite the mission's efforts to maintain peace and security in the region, the violence continues. The mission will maintain its work to ensure people's freedom of movements and set up checkpoints to deter criminals. 
And from Myanmar, our colleagues at the World Food Program tell us that food and nutrition aid has reached 2.1 million people during the first quarter of this year. WFP hopes to reach at least 4 million of the most food insecure and vulnerable people in the country this year, subject to the availability of resources and access to those in need. The agency calls for unimpeded humanitarian access since this access to the newly displaced population is mainly uh, in active conflict zones, remains largely restricted. WFP will begin distributing food and other supplies to Kaya State this week after attempting to gain access to the air since July of last year. In southern Shan State, WFP is delivering inter to internally displaced people and families who fled, fled the fighting in Kaya State. Uh, the agency tells us that fuel prices have doubled in the past year, driving up food prices. Compared to the same time last year, the average cost of basic food basket is up 32 percent. What do we have? Uh, okay. Uh, and a few international days for you today. Uh, not one, not two, but three, actually. Uh, today is uh, the day of Vesak. In his message, the Secretary General said this year Vesak arrives at a moment of multiplying crises from unequal recovery from COVID-19 to the punishing effects of climate change to conflicts and divisions and violence. Each crisis reminds us of how far we have fallen away from Lord Buddha's timeless teaching, he said. Today is also the International Day of Light which celebrates the role light plays in science, culture, and art, education, and sustainable development, among other fields. And finally, it is also the International Day of Living Together in Peace, which brings, um, which we need, uh, which is all about accepting differences and having the availability, the ability to listen, recognize, respect, and appreciate others. On that note, since I listen and appreciate you, I will take your questions. Edie, sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry, Edie, I was... <laughs> uh, thank you, Steph. Um, first question, follow-up on Yemen and uh, activities between the UN and the International um, Red Cross on trying to facilitate new convoys and evacuations from uh, Ukraine. You, sorry, Ukraine. Or I Yemen? start. Uh, it's sorry, a, okay. I was. Good, I have. I had a question on Yemen also, okay. but right. <laughs> this. Sorry, I'm talking about <laughs> Ukraine. Um, is there any uh, follow-up activity in the works? planning, uh, is the UN, um, is the ICRC I mean, still trying to facilitate evacuation? We, uh, nothing concrete to report uh, to you at this time. Uh, we are continuing to be in touch, obviously, with our, our partners at the ICRC, but also with the Ukrainian and Russian authorities in trying to find ways to alleviate the suffering of, um, of civilians and for greater humanitarian access, both in terms of getting goods in and getting civilians out. Uh, as you know, the, the situation on the ground remains extremely uh, difficult. So we will continue our practice of confirming things once they've happened. And on a completely different subject, Following up, has the Secretary General made any attempt to uh, contact uh, Kim Jong Un, the leader of the DPRK, about their uh, COVID outbreak and trying to um, offer UN assistance? I, we, the the short answer is there's been no no outreach uh, that I'm aware of between the Secretary General and the. Uh, the leader of the DPRK. Uh, we're trying to get to see from our humanitarian colleagues what, uh, if anything, has been done. We obviously uh, remain at the disposal of the authorities in Pyongyang to help in any way uh, we can. Uh, before we go on, I do have a statement on Somalia I want to share with you. 
Uh, the Secretary General welcomes the holding of peaceful presidential elections in Somalia on May 15th and congratulates Mr. Hassan Sheikh Mohammed on his election as the 10th federal president of Somalia. He commends the outgoing president, Mohamed Abdullahi Mohamed Farmajo, for his immediate accepting of the results and expressing support for his successor. The Secretary General expresses the hope that the new president will move swiftly from, uh, to form an inclusive cabinet and that the new government and federal member states will work closely together to advance critical national priorities and address the challenges that Somalia faces. The Secretary General reiterates the continued support of the United Nations to the government and people of Somalia and looks forward to uh, working closely with the new administration to advance Somalia's state-building agenda and address the dire humanitarian situation in the country. Yes, sir. Thank you, Stefan. Welcome back. Uh, many uh, local sources from Libya uh, stating that uh, many members of the parliament are uh, planning to ask the Secretary General to replace Stephanie Williams, accusing her of being incompetent uh, to solve the Libyan issue. Do uh, you have any comment on that? Look, uh, we've said this quite often, and I will reiterate it in, in extremely clear terms. Uh, Ms. Williams has the full backing of the Secretary General in the work that she is currently doing in Libya. The responsibility to solve the problems of Libya is the job of Libyan leaders. They have a responsibility towards their own people. We, uh, in the person of Stephanie Williams, will continue to work with the various parties, factions, and groups to help them come together for the sake of the Libyan people. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, hi. Um, I, I just wanted to follow up on um, a question that we've been asking. Oh, you're, I need you to use your microphone. Okay. That's OK. So the world can hear you. <laughs> So I just wanted to follow up. I have two quick questions regarding our colleague Shirin Abu Akhle. Um I know there was a statement last week, and we tried getting a clarification on what was meant by um, independent investigation in the uh, statement you put out yesterday, uh, last week, sorry, and who would conduct this independent investigation, especially that the Palestinians have been going through with their own investigation, and if... Um, I mean, just clarify on that. And the second question is, we all saw the attack on the pallbearers, and I know there was a reaction from you, uh, from uh, Farhan on Friday regarding that. But today, new footage was also released of Israeli forces actually storming the hospital where uh, Shireen's casket was. Uh, so if you have any comment on that. Look, uh, an independent investigation, I think, is exactly that, independent. It would have to be agreed to uh, by all the parties, uh, the parties involved. Um, I think we can only be shocked uh, at the footage that we saw and the events that we saw around, uh, around the, uh, the funeral of uh, Shireen Abu Akleh. Uh, it is important uh, that uh, not only funerals, but also hospitals, uh, be their, their sanctity, in a sense, be uh, be respected. Uh, we've taken note from what I've seen also of the Israelis uh, saying they would have an investigation to the conduct of, uh, of the police. We hope that investigation uh, is done quickly and the results made public. Edward. Hi, Stefan. A uh, couple of follow-ups from uh, Edith. Uh, today, the Russian Defense Ministry said uh, they reached an agreement to evacuate wounded Ukrainian soldiers from Azovstal uh, steelworks plant. Is the United Nations aware of this? And uh, do you have any comments on the latest development? We are, I've seen these reports. Uh, we are not involved, as far as I'm aware, in the evacuation of uh, any wounded combatants. So, so you're aware, but not, not participate in this operation. That, that's okay. And uh, the second question is, uh, in in the last few few days, uh, Sweden and Finland decided to join NATO. I know it's a sovereign country's decision, but uh, do you do you uh, th does the Secretary General worry it could be an an escalation or at least to complicate the situation now in in Europe? Well, as you you said, it is a sovereign uh, it is sovereign decision made by uh, 
by member states. Uh, our focus remains on uh, trying to put an end to this conflict and especially on uh, trying to alleviate uh, the humanitarian situation uh, facing millions of Ukrainians. Uh, Majid and then Madame. Thank you, Stefan. I have two questions. First one on Iran. Uh, there are uh, protests uh, due to economic hardships inside Iran, and there are reports of crackdown by the government. Any reaction to that? Uh, I, to I haven't seen those reports, but uh, let me look. But okay. I mean, as as, been all as, as, a, as a matter as, as a matter of course, as you know, uh, we strongly believe that anyone should be able to demonstrate uh, freely and peacefully. And my second question is on, on Iraq. Uh, uh, the Iraqi um, oil authorities have accused the Kurdistan regional government of taking over certain oil fields by military force. Some sees this as a, their concern of a use of military force by the Iraq against Kurdistan regional government. Does the Secretary General and UN has any reaction? Uh, let me heard check. Let me UN? check. I have not heard. Let me check with our colleagues at the mission in, in Baghdad. Celia. Uh, Stephen Mali, Paris, and its European partner are supposed to leave at the end of August. Three bases were supposed to remain in operation, Gossi, Menalka, and Gao. It will not be the case, of course. So will their withdrawal have an impact on the MINUSMA? Will the withdrawal of the French forces? And the European. You know, we, we are dealing in Mali with a situation that is being dealt to us, right? Uh, it is clear that these things will have an impact. The work of the mission will adapt. But what has not changed is the mission's mandate. Yeah. Yeah, one follow-up on Secretary General's statement on the Buffalo shooting. Um, what is the UN's position on gun control in general for countries? What is the United Nations recommendation in terms of semi-automatic weapon in US and other countries? I, I would refer you to uh, the UN small arms, uh, small arms treaty. But, uh, but the Secretary General doesn't have a position I, I, I on that? I would refer you to the UN's uh, small, uh, small arms treaty on that. Treaty? Uh, the treaty, oh, okay. small arms treaty, yeah. But with, based on that, what is the UN's position on the use of semi-automatic weapon look, by civilians or, or have the right to purchase at the supermarkets? As look, each country has its own, uh, its own laws uh, and regulations. Uh, what we saw uh, was a, a heinous act of of violence uh, fueled by racism uh, and by hatred, uh, clearly made worse uh, by the weapons used. And I'll leave it at that. Thanks. Celia. Yes, uh, let's go back to the special envoy to Libya. I heard that uh, the, the African group has come out or came up with a name, one name, of an African, and they sent it to the Secretary General. Do you know anything about it? Questions, I mean, do I know anything about anything? Uh, there, there's <laughs> been lots of, I mean, as you know, the issue on, on, on Libya and the naming of a special representative has been uh, the focus, a lot of chatter, a lot of rumors, a lot of questions, not too many answers. Um, when uh, we are ready, uh, there will be a name submitted, uh, and that name will have to. There'll have to be some agreement from uh, from the Security Council. But I have nothing to uh, uh, nothing to confirm at this point. The Secretary General will be ready. This is the object of a lot of discussions and phone calls, and discussions and more phone calls. Yes, madam. Uh, yeah, offhand, when does this truce end in uh, Yemen? It was oh. two months, right? Uh, yes, it was two, two months or three. Uh, one would have to check offhand. Uh, I will get back to you because clearly I don't know offhand. 
but we hope it will last as long as possible for the sake of the Yemeni people. But it was agreed upon for two months, uh, and we very much hope it will be a building block for a longer truce. Speaking of truce, Polina, come on up. <laughs> 